Oh, welcome to Don Dat Dam Market. Located in the heart and center of District 1 here in Saigon, this market is over 100 years old and is one of the few things left in this district that has not fallen to modernization. But today's video is not about this market, but instead what markets like this have inspired Vietnamese food to be today and in the future. But in this old market that has this worn, rich history, feel, and presence to it, lies one place, and one place in particular, An An. Not just any restaurant, but recently ranked the 39th best restaurant in all of Asia. So that's what we are doing today. We are gonna see what this market is inspired food-wise by going to An An. Chef Peter and his team have created a very diverse, fun setting right here, and it's just a local market in Saigon. So we're gonna get in here and see what creations and inspirations Peter has come up with all from around Vietnam. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Congrats on 39th again. 39. I was going to put a little flashing number 39 and we just unofficially changed the address to 39. Don't get down. What do you think? You 39. 89, no good. Go we 39. We just make it 39, 3, 3. We just remove the 8 and we put the 3 on. Yeah. Can I chơi một chút? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I want to chơi, chơi, chơi. Chơi, for people outside of Vietnam, they look at this, they think it's really unsafe. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you could consider this almost this as being dry aged meat that's been sitting. So let's say the cow's been killed this morning. So now they've been dry, they're sitting outside. Um, so the more liquid is removed from the meat here, that means more flavor. This meat here is non-refrigerated, dry aged for half a day, mm -hmm. beautiful stuff. In the old days, people would, you know, but they would come to a market like just two times a day. That's the school over there. Mm. The mother would drop off the kids from school, go buy something from her and some vegetable, garlic and stuff to cook for the morning. And then when they drop off the kids, pick up the kids in the evening time, they buy some more stuff for the evening or another time. And generally when they come here, she knows the customer already. There's this very personal interaction between them. It's not like a supermarket where you just buy stuff that's saran wrap. And then the key is, uh, she will ask them two questions. One, what dish are you making? And two, how much do you want? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the base room, you come in, just come have a meal. You can tell it's Friday night, you got reservation, 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 and here ready to go. I'm gonna go see the rooftop, is that okay? Okay, cool. Yeah. And this is where it's at. So they've actually got like a rooftop bar. And this is one of my favorite views of Saigon. Look at this, the breeze is cool. It's like 5 p.m. They're gonna have music going. Friday, Saturday, DJ. Oh, this spot. Okay, but let's get this meal started. Basically, deep fry waff waffle that's normally made with rice flour, and uh, so normally it's street food. But just dust it with sugar. You eat it really quick. It's nice. So what we do is we just take that technique, and then we turn it into a savory dish that's not traditionally used. So sometimes just a, a small change. But we have to learn the technique how to make this properly. It has the the ban yung on the bottom. Then we're doing one layer of the smoked salmon. Then we have one layer of the white, it's the creme fraiche. The, we're taking the deer dog, which is the Vietnamese seashell. We are um, extracting the flavor with a bit of cream, and so we're basically making a cream sauce with the Vietnamese deer dog, which is lighter flavor than the Western uh, um, deer Or not deer dog, but chicken, tila, tila, sorry. This is very French in this technique. 
with all the dots and all the different places. So we do some stuff where we just grill and some stuff where we go to the troll to make sure all the dots are right and all the shape. And so this is uh, traditionally what people think is fine dining. Uh, they don't see fine dining as stuff you put on the grill. But we do a mix of everything together. Oh, this thing is absolutely beautiful. What a great starter. I love the way the black, the greens, the oranges, all the colors kind of work together. Those textures are what you want for that first bite. You get the crunch, you get the creaminess, the creme fraiche gives it just like this little bit of acidity that goes with just a deep, rich, smoky salmon flavor. And then the little salmon roll just kind of just bursts in your mouth. Mm. And that little bit of dill flavor is it's hint, it's faint, but it's, it's beautiful. He, he took it from a street food dish, but that's kind of what I love about food and dining is we all get our different perspective. Because me, for some reason, I'm just getting Takka vibes, like Takka and Hanoi. So, you know, everybody's gonna get different vibes. Probably the dill coming through it, that reminds me. So we're doing snails today, no, okay. Uh, this is very different, uh, in the inside very different than uh, the lap style snail. Uh, in the lap it's a whole snail with the pork outside. In, you eat this in uh, Hanoi, they chop it up uh, so you can taste the snail so it's less texture. So what we've done is this more Hanoi style. Yeah, it's like on Dalat style in its construction. Uh, but the sauce is actually more Saigon style which is more of a coconut sauce. Okay. Uh, which tend to see in Hanoi, uh, in Saigon, types of dish. In Hanoi, they have it too, but they use more of a garlic and fish sauce, so. And this is, uh, we call Vietnamese pesto, basically it's a herb sauce. Sometimes we use the herb, but we want to, uh... These flowers are edible flowers from Da Lat. This is one single snail. Sometimes we do one because this way we pay attention to one. And you pay attention only one when you're eating. When you get 10, what happens? You eat one, you think about the other nine. <laughs> you're not giving love to the one. Peter over here speaking truth. <laughs> we need to give you more dishes to try and less things so that we pay attention more. All three regions in Vietnam and then the French culture in one piece of snail. <laughs> In the straw nestled, it's just almost reminds me of like an egg. It's something so light and delicate, and something like Peter was talking about. You really want to focus on this. Your attention goes straight to this one snail. So, like I said, one biter, don't let that tension fade. It's just transporting me to so many different parts of Vietnam. It's so much fun. I just love seeing something that you eat that I eat in the lap all the time, but has these hints of flavor that are the pure soul of Saigon. Doing is the bánh bột lọc, which is in Hoi. The thing about bánh bột lọc is it's, uh, it's very chewy. Uh, it's a texture that is appreciated in Vietnamese uh, cuisine, but in the West, uh, not so much. <laughs> Uh, so what we've done is we alter the ratio of the, the flour mix between the tapioca and the, the rice flour and the water. Texture to the way we like it, we, which means that it's still chewy but not as chewy as normal. Uh, so the sauce for the Ban Bok Lop, we do more of Hanoi style, uh, Hanoi, and also in Dalat. Um, you eat, for example, the mi, Ban Mi, they warm up the, the broth and bread because it's white, it's cold in Saigon, it's hot as hell. but. <laughs> so it's not practical to heat things up, but we do it because of the taste and to maintain the integrity of the dish. Let it hydrate and boil a little bit to get some nice and shiny so that it stick together. So we do it 
like that because it looks like a little bit like a yin and a yang. So these are a little bit of uh, foie gras that we poach in the liquid. The fat from the pork will come out and will flavor the sauce also too a little bit. This is uh, coriander. Normally, we, we actually make an oil out of this thing. Okay. It's creepy shallots. Uh, this is uh, called Jimmy Toregasi with the Japanese seven spice. Uh, we use it because the flavor is a little bit more subtle than some of the Vietnamese Asian chilies. It's just a little bit too acidic. Uh, this one's good, a little bit more balanced. If I didn't know what that was, a Vietnamese dish would not be my first take. Actually, it's more like ravioli. He has changed it more to a Western palate to where that wrapper is a little more melt in your mouth it's soft instead it has just a very slight just a subtle subtle chew to it mm. other dishes uh, like this is different we are uh, changing the nature of the dish from a soup into like a sauce more like a pasta. We reduce liquid as much as we can. But what we do now is we want the flavor so we, we remove the water. It's funny when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's Miwon. But the way he's presented it, reduced down that sauce, it almost just looks like a nice pine dining Italian noodle. That's one of the best Miwon noodles you will ever eat. I just can't even tell you how loving and doughy and warm those noodles feel in your mouth and the way the sauce is reduced. You can't see it, but you feel the love. You feel the reduced down flavor. You feel the intense flavor. And the best part is getting a little banda, a little crunchy bit with it. Ooh. Even the banda is different. It's light, kind of like a fuin, really, really light banda like that. But there's almost a slight crystallization to it. There's this burnt, bitter flavor component coming from it that you usually don't get as much in this. It goes with that loving, meaty pork, shrimp, the peanut reduced down sauce and noodle. What we do now is quite a little bit more uh, radical in its change. We're taking the whole bunja and uh, we transform this into a, just a one bite experience. We want to eat this and you can feel the bunja. So this is what we have two components to it. So we have the jia and then we have the nem nương Hanoi style that we're gonna grill, okay? And then we're gonna put it all together when you eat this. Hopefully you feel the bunja. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm gonna in in honor of Budin. Uh, so uh, when he and Obama goes to Hanoi, they eat buncha and they drink a Hanoi beer. So we give you the total experience between Obama and Budin in one bite, one tiny little shot with the beer hut. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, and look at it, it is a one biter. So they've actually got the little cha that they put on that grill. They got the cha yao, which is going to be the fried spring roll. You see the carrot, the daikon radish, the cilantro, all on that pray leaf on the bottom. And then the foam on top, 
it's actually a bit long. You can go for it. The chow, and that is the main predominant flavor. So soft, the, the heat, the smoke, the char, which is so enticing. And then the perfect ratio of the fresh herbs, the acidic, the sweet, with that crunchy fried spring roll. And now this is a Bunta, Obama, Anthony Bourdain. So it always comes with a nice little shot of beer. So this is the polar look. Right now we're using uh, Wagyu and, and bone marrow. Okay, we want flavor. Yeah. Okay, and bone marrow give you a lot of flavor. Sauce, everything inside already. Sorry, I didn't hear. What sauce is it? Secret sauce. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> that works. <laughs> This is the one that was smoking earlier. This is the balalo, one of my favorite dishes in all of Vietnam. A little bit of peanut on topping with the sauce. Now I do believe this actually is supposed to be dipped in the sauce here, so I hope it is. I'm gonna look silly if it's not supposed to be. I would literally come here and I would order 30 of these eat 30 of these and leave and be the happiest person ever. That was, that was the bite for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. The Wagyu, fatty, rich as it is, but now they're putting bone marrow in there. It's salty, enhances that flavor. The la lope leaf, that little bit of pepperiness. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite dishes in Vietnam just took a few steps above. Call it right now. The bite, money bite, should have called it money bite. Now my taste buds need a break after all that flavor, so they get a little fruit sorbet here. So, uh, this is, we're using a little bit of molecular uh, technique to make this one. So we're taking the pho, we make it into one bite. Uh, what we've done now, we're encapsulating the flavor of the pho into one bite, and then we're making smoke with uh, what is traditionally put inside the fire, which is uh, you have the spices, uh, star anise, cinnamon. Uh, so you can smell a little bit of the uh, aroma now. That's the, a bit of the star anise. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's just kind of jiggling. Oh my gosh. I knew it was a molecular ball, but even when you bite into it, you're not ready for it just to erupt and burst the way it does. It's so funny because it's very modern cooking techniques, but eventually when you take that bite, it's the same sensation when you're eating pho out in a stall here in Vietnam. So sometimes what we do is we take two different dishes, two different ideas, and we do something that is somewhere in between. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, Vietnamese flavor, but it's closer to uh, carpaccio, but it's not normally what you see as carpaccio. Now, this is a very good quality Australian beef ribeye that we dry age ourselves for about one month. Green peppercorn, red peppercorn, black peppercorn from Phu Quoc. So this one uh, has the texture and the seasoning from the Vietnamese flavor itself. Oh yes, you see that dry aging on the edges right there. Just kind of rip mine in half, get that quail egg spread out on top. With this tasting menu a lot, you've seen a lot of beef and pepper put together in another dish that's doing it so well. Three types of pepper, that aged beef, pulling that moisture out, intensifying that delicious beef flavor, which is already 
a good cut of beef coming from Australia, then taking that quail egg, spreading that yolk all over it, just taking it to another level of richness. So we do many variations of pho. Oh, it's such an important dish for, uh, for Vietnam. Basically, it has to, we take in a French dish, but we Vietnamize it. So it has the inside has the flavor and has the ban pho inside, but it's inspired by a French dish. So what we're we gonna do now? We're gonna lift the cover up. So um, you can see it, right? Yes. Clean up inside here, so you fill up. So I'm gonna make you taste it. <laughs> <laughs> taste this right now. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's very okay. light, very right, clean. Very light, very delicate, very clean. The spices come in later. Right. Yes. Right. So we want to make a very clean, delicate flavor. Uh, soften on here. So what we do now is um, this. Uh, we have this. Uh, the French call. And they have something called the bouquet gané which is a mix of different types of herbs, uh, easy from Provence. So here now we'll be creating something we call the, almost like a, a Saigon Dalat Bouquet Gane. So we have different types of herbs inside here. Uh, you can put a little bit of different herbs in and eat it to get different flavor. So we already put some of that puff pastry in there. I dig that. I like that you have some of it in there and some of it not. Go in there. Wow. Actually, it's going to be easier to go with the spoon here. It's so hot. Whoa. To me, golly. I mean, that just takes me back to mom and grandma's cooking, like some chicken and noodle soup or some chicken and dumpling soup. Look at this pastry. Mm. Nice, buttery, flaky, light. Crispy, insane. And why not take advantage of this rooftop and finish off a little dessert up here? So for this dessert now we do something which is uh, radically different. So uh, sometimes we, we call this uh, con cherry pairing or opposite, opposite pairing. So what we're doing here is we have uh, it's a Vahoma chocolate, white chocolate that we we make it into a foam with the coconut water, so it's not too sweet. And then we're using uh, caviar from Dalat, my hometown, where you're living at the moment. <laughs> uh, so it has the sweet and savory, and also the the yo, uh, also strawberry is also from Dalat for us right now. We pick uh, this is probably one of the best strawberry in Vietnam right now. Uh, we give you a dessert which has a basically sweet and savory at the same time, something a little bit unusual. So, hope you enjoy. Now, y'all, I have not eaten much caviar in my life. I definitely have never had caviar with my dessert. So, I'm gonna do like Peter said get a big O, one bite, money bite. I'm, I'm being rocked in so many different directions from the caviar, that pop, that burst, those pearls of saltiness, the actual strawberry. It's got like this syrup sweetness to it. And then the foam, this white chocolate foam that just dissolves in your mouth. Not only is it just so many different flavors going on, but the textures are well, are just complete opposites. The opposites that attract. Uh, also, normally we don't have dessert wine in Vietnam, so what we do now, this is called uh, Gao Nep. Uh, so we are taking something that is very traditional and uh, we are taking the process and we're redoing it. Uh, for me it works as a, kind of like an after dinner drink, so uh, we call this a limoncello. <laughs> A Viet limoncello, because for me it reminds me of an Italian limoncello, but it's not as sweet. <laughs> Definitely know it's alcoholic, but it's interesting. It does have just like a sweet, 
sweet rice liquor flavor to it, a little fruitiness to it, bubbly. Now y'all, that was a really, really special experience because it's like nothing I've ever had before in Vietnam. And that's the whole point. Peter's a very good friend of me. I have so much respect for Peter because he is uh, he's somebody blazing the path. You know, he's taken a lot of chances by doing this. He's taken a cuisine that's, you know, very, very known for sticking to tradition, which I have no problem with, but I love seeing Peter do something like this, putting Vietnamese food on the map. I talk about it so much. I feel like Vietnamese food is underrated. And what Peter's doing is just helping it grow, expand, and get known to a wider audience. So I'm so happy I got to do now. I'm so happy I get to know Peter. I'm glad I got to bring y'all along with me. I hope you enjoyed this. Just the symbolism from being in this old market to having the new Saigon built around it, to having Peter's restaurant here. It was truly special, very symbolic, and loved every minute of it. Hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different and hopefully not the last time. Y'all so Max, catch you at the next one. Peace.